In this video we're going to look at reactions. Specifically, we're going to try to see if we can determine the difference between a metathesis and a redox reaction. So first we have to define them. In a metathesis reaction, the oxidation numbers do not change. So what that means is we're only rearranging atoms or ions, but the possession of electrons is unchanged. The other type of reaction is a redox reaction. And redox is short for oxidation reduction reaction. And this is a reaction where the oxidation numbers do change. So that means that at some point in time in the reaction, there is a movement of electrons from one atom to another. So we're going to keep those definitions in the back of our minds. And we're going to try to identify the five reaction types that we have learned prior to this in terms of metathesis and redox. So we're going to start with a double displacement. Example of a double displacement could be this reaction of the sodium sulfate and barium chloride to yield sodium chloride and barium sulfate. This equation is balanced, the formulas are correct. We always have to start at that point. I'm going to say that the coefficients do not factor into oxidation numbers. If you factor them in, you will not have a problem, but you do not need to factor them in. So I will not as I'm figuring this out. So when you, need, so when you want to determine this, you want to do the oxidation numbers for each compound that are reactants and each compound that are products separately. So the sodium sulfate. In the sodium sulfate, sodium is a monoatomic ion with a charge of plus one. And monoatomic ions, the oxidation numbers are equal to the charge, so the oxidation number for sodium is plus one. Oxygen is in a compound, and when oxygen is in a compound, its oxidation number is usually minus two. If I go through and do the math for this, the two sodium have an overall charge of plus two. The four oxygen have an overall charge of minus eight. The compound is neutral, so when I add the one sulfur to the plus two and the minus eight, it has to equal zero, so that means the sulfur has to be a plus six. In the second chemical, the barium chloride, barium is a monoatomic ion with charge of plus two, so that means its oxidation number is plus two. And chloride is a monoatomic ion with a charge of minus one, so its oxidation number is minus one. Reactants are done, let's go to the products. In the sodium chloride, sodium is a monoatomic ion with a charge of plus one, so its oxidation number is plus one. Chloride is a monoatomic ion whose charge is minus one, so its oxidation number is minus one. Barium sulfate is a monoatomic ion whose charge is plus two, so its oxidation number is plus two. The oxygen in the compound is oxygen in a compound, so its oxidation number will be minus two again. If I go through the same math process, barium chloride is plus two, the four minus twos make minus eight, so sulfur has to be plus six in order for that to balance. Or if I remember from the oxidation number video, the oxidation numbers of an ion are always the same. So if sulfur and sulfate is plus six in one case, it has to be plus six every time I encounter sulfate. So if I look, the sodiums are always plus one on products and reactants. Oxygen is minus two on products and reactants. Sulfur is plus six in both products and reactants. Barium is plus two, chlorine is minus one. The oxidation numbers do not change, so this is a metathesis reaction. And double displacement reactions, all we are doing are exchanging ions. And because the oxidation numbers of ions do not change, double displacement reactions will always be metathesis reactions. Second type of reaction is a single displacement. So here's our example of a single displacement reaction. Aluminum plus copper two chloride yields copper plus aluminum chloride. My equation is balanced, my formulas are correct. Starting with reactants, aluminum is in its elemental state, so its oxidation number is zero. And the copper two chloride, copper is a monoatomic ion with a charge of plus two, copper two chloride, so its oxidation number is also plus two. Chloride is a monoatomic ion with a charge of minus one, so its oxidation is minus one. On the product side, in this case, copper is the element, so its oxidation number is zero. In aluminum chloride, aluminum is a monoatomic ion with charge of plus three, so its oxidation number is plus three. And the chloride is a monoatomic ion whose charge is minus one, so its oxidation number is minus one. So if we look at this, aluminum goes from zero to plus three, copper goes from plus two to zero, chloride stays the same. So in this reaction, there are things whose oxidation numbers are changing, so that makes it a redox. And in a single displacement reaction, we always have an element becoming an ion and an ion becoming an element. So going from zero to a number or from a number to zero. So single displacement reactions are always redox reactions. Let's look at combustion reactions. 
Combustion reaction could be propane, combusting in oxygen to give us carbon dioxide and water. So let's start with the propane. The hydrogen in propane is with a non-metal, so that means its oxidation number is plus one. If I do the math, there are eight hydrogen and three carbon. So three carbons plus eight has to equal zero. That means carbon is going to have an oxidation number of eight thirds. The oxygen, O2 is the elemental form of oxygen. So oxygen has an oxidation number of zero. On the product side, in the carbon dioxide, oxygen is in a compound, so its oxidation number is minus two. Two minus twos give us a minus four. So carbon has to be a plus four in order to make that zero. In the water, oxygen is in a compound, so it's minus two. And hydrogen is with a non-metal, so its oxidation number is plus one. So if I look at this, hydrogen is plus one on both the products and reactant side. Carbon goes from positive eight-thirds to positive four, so its oxidation number is changing. Oxygen goes from zero to minus two, so its oxidation number is changing. So this combustion reaction is a redox. And in every combustion reaction, oxygen is going from its elemental state to carbon dioxide and water. So that means every combustion reaction will be a redox reaction. Let's look at our next type, which is going to be a synthesis reaction. And an example of a synthesis reaction could be hydrogen and oxygen coming together to make water. In this case, hydrogen is in its elemental form, so its oxidation number is zero. Oxygen is in its elemental form, so its oxidation number is zero. On the product side in the water, oxygen is in a compound, so its oxidation number is minus two. And hydrogen is bonded with a nonmetal, so its oxidation number is plus one. So hydrogen goes from zero to plus one. Oxygen goes from zero to minus two. So this is a redox. But we have multiple types of synthesis reactions. And another example could be our metal oxide and water making a base. So if I look at this, magnesium oxide, uh, the oxygen magnesium oxide is in a compound, so it is minus two. Magnesium is a monoatomic ion with a charge of plus two, so its oxidation number is plus two. In the water, oxygen is in a compound, so its oxidation number is minus two. Hydrogen is with a non-metal, so its oxidation number is plus one. In the magnesium hydroxide, Magnesium is a monoatomic ion with charge of plus two, so its oxidation number is plus two. Oxygen is in a compound, so its oxidation number is minus two. Hydrogen is in the hydroxide part, so it is bonded to a nonmetal, so its oxidation number is plus one. So in this case, we have oxygen is always minus two, magnesium is always plus two, hydrogen is always plus one. So in this case, this reaction is a metathesis reaction. So synthesis reactions can be either. Last type of reaction is a decomposition. Example of a decomposition reaction is sodium chloride decomposing into sodium and chlorine. If I look at this reaction, on the reactant side, sodium is a monoatomic ion whose charge is plus one, so its oxidation number is plus one. Chloride is a monoatomic ion whose charge is minus one, so its oxidation number is minus one. On the product side, sodium is in its elemental form, so its oxidation number is zero. And chlorine is in its elemental form, so its oxidation number is zero. So sodium goes from plus one to zero, and chlorine goes from minus one to zero, so this decomposition reaction is a redox. But we have multiple types of decomposition reactions as well. And we remember that we can do the decomposition of a carbonate. So here we have iron three carbonate becoming iron three oxide and carbon dioxide. In this reaction, the iron three carbonate Iron is a monoatomic ion with charge of plus three, so its oxidation number is plus three. In the carbonate, we have oxygen in a compound, so its oxidation number is minus two. So we have two things with a charge of minus three, which is plus six, and we have nine things with a charge of minus two, which is plus 18. So that means our three carbon have to have a charge of 12 in order to make it neutral, so each carbon has a charge of plus four. On the product side, in our iron three oxide, iron is a monoatomic ion with charge of plus three, so its oxidation number is plus three. Oxygen is in a compound, so its oxidation number is minus two. For the carbonate, oxygen is in a compound, so its oxidation number is minus two. We have two things with an oxidation number of minus two, so that means carbon has to be plus four in order to come together with a neutral compound. So in this decomposition reaction, iron is always plus three, 
oxygen is always minus 2, carbon is always plus 4, so this decomposition reaction is a metathesis. So decomposition reactions can also be either. Those are our five main type of reactions that we learned. Double displacement is always metathesis. Single displacement is always redox. Combustion is always redox. Synthesis can be either. Decomposition can be either. So we're going to look at one special case. Special case type of reaction, an example of it, is hydrogen peroxide decomposing into water and oxygen. So if I look at the reactants, the hydrogen is bonded with a nonmetal, so its oxidation number is plus one. Our reactant is hydrogen peroxide, and if you remember from redox, we said peroxide was a special case for oxygen. If hydrogen is plus one, the only way oxygen to oxygen can make a neutral compound if it's, is if its oxidation number is minus one. And in a peroxide, the oxidation number for oxygen is minus one. That is a special case. On the products, in the water, hydrogen is plus one because it is with a nonmetal. Oxygen in, is in a compound, so it is minus two. And for the O2, oxygen is in its elemental state, so it is zero. So if we look at this, hydrogen is plus one on both the products and reactant side. But the oxygen goes from minus one to minus two in the water, and from minus one to zero in the oxygen. So oxygen is changing into two different forms of itself. And when that happens, we have what is called a disproportionation reaction. And that is a redox reaction where the same element changes in two different ways. This is how we can tell whether something is going to be a metathesis versus a redox reaction.